Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to World Card Making Day for 2020. And I am waiting on my iPad to catch up just so I can keep an idea of what's going on. So, glad to see everybody here this morning. And let me mute my iPad. I forgot about that. As if I don't have enough other distractions this morning. I, normally, this is one of my favorite times to craft. Saturday mornings, it's quiet. My people are still asleep. And as luck would have it, my neighbor began mowing this morning about five minutes ago. And my dog is now uh, acknowledging, or at least registering his complaint about the mowing this early. So, Without any further ado, let's get started on the my first session uh, for World Card Making Day. Today, my friend and I, Elizabeth, are doing a tag team of videos, live videos throughout the day for World Card Making Day. Uh, at the top of the hour, be sure and visit Spread Joy Stamping, which is Elizabeth Mayfield Hart's website on Facebook. It's her page on Facebook. She's doing videos at the top of the hour. I'm doing videos at the bottom of the hour here on Dream in Color SU. So, uh, let me also say, uh, if you like what you see, please visit dreamincolor72207.com. That's my website that has some other information in it. But the cool thing about World Card Making Day, let me talk about that for a second, is that we, uh, Stampin' Up! Uh, as a family, we are an international company, and we are making cards with people all around the world today. We have demonstrators in North America, Europe, and Australia, Japan, um, I'm sure I'm missing somewhere, but I think it's cool that we're making cards as a group all around the world. So what we're starting this morning is the Forever Fern stamp set. That'll be the first card I make this morning. We'll use the Forever Fern stamp set. And I want to feature the Forever Greenery designer series paper. Elizabeth mentioned that we have an ongoing sale in October, that we have 15 sets of designer series paper, which is our printed paper, that are on sale and uh, for 15% off. And I wanna show you that this is one of those sets. This is the Forever Greenery uh, designer series paper and I've got these spread out here so that you can see all the different patterns and those of you that know me know that I love some designer paper love some printed paper so our kits our sets typically come uh, to uh, I can't remember how many sheets are in there I have to draw I've drawn a blank but they're double-sided so this page uh, this page right here backs up to this stripe this page right here backs up to the oops that pattern behind it these two are together these two are together and these two are together and so there's two sheets of every <clears throat> two sheets of every pattern in here and uh, it makes for a great quick and easy way to spruce up your cards so uh, without any further well what i also want to show you is in this particular card we're also going to highlight this this is some specialty designer series paper which unfortunately is not on sale, but it is this beautiful gold die cut paper. And you can see these are laser cut. And so you have the, the greenery that goes and you can see it complements the stamp set. And then we also have these grids that are perfect for making backgrounds on your cards. And so here we go. And we're gonna use, these are the supplies we're using for the first card. Let me get this out of the way and we will start to stamp. So this is the card that we're gonna be making this morning. This is a super simple card. It concentrates using a uh, designer series paper, a piece of cardstock, one of those pieces from the gold laser cut paper, um, another piece of whisper white, and some of the, um, let me get the name of it, Forever Greenery Combo. This is a vanilla, it's called Vanilla Gold. And uh, that's one of the things that Stampin' Up! does. It's great. They put together what's called a suite so that you know that if you purchase everything in the suite, it all complements and goes together very well. So I love that uh, in their product offerings. That's wonderful. So let's get started. This card does not have a, a whole bunch of stamping, but that's okay because you don't have to have a whole bunch of stamping. What we're going to do is the first thing now this one is this is called a top folding card because it folds to the top i'm going to make this one as a side folding card 
like what you would normally see it like that and I do this so that you can see that just because my one of mine is a top folding card doesn't mean yours has to be one a top folding card as well so when you make your cards we traditionally our card bases are going to be half of an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper so if it's eight and a half by eleven we cut it in half it'll be eight and a half by five and a half this is five and a half that's eight and a half we score this at four and a quarter which is half of eight and a half if we were to make it as a top folding card we would cut the paper in half the other direction this is 11 and that is four and a quarter so those are some of your basic geometry right there i like to use a bone folder to get a good crease on my card that way it, it lays flat and then first thing we're going to do is attach our designer series paper now I really prefer stripes and dots, so I'm going to use the I'm going to ref, um, use the stripe for the background of this card, and we're going to lay this on here. Now, this designer series paper is cut to uh, four and an eighth by five and three eighths, which is half of a quarter sheet of cardstock is four and a quarter by five and a half. So if you take an eighth off of each of those, of uh, eighth off of each axis, you end up with four and an eighth by five and three eighths, which gives you a large amount of paper, but then just a little bit of a, an edge to frame it. The next thing we're going to do is add this piece of um, shaded spruce, and this is cut at four by three and a fourth, four inches, four inches this way one two three four by three and a quarter this way and again you're going to use your tape runner or your stamping seal to adhere this to the card and you can i generally eyeball it i don't get real specific like that and then the next layer is part of this beautiful gold die cut now one of the cool things about this so this is beautiful this is gold this makes it look very rich but you know if I wanted to I could flip this over and just put the white leaves out like that and then come back and stamp here I could do that I'm, I, I'm not I'm not gonna do that this morning I choose not to do that <clears throat> excuse me um, so what we'll do is use our little runner here put this down and on this piece, you can just put your adhesive in the center part, and you don't necessarily have to put adhesive on the leaves. And then again, you're going to center that on the piece of shaded spruce. So there you have it. We're almost, look at that. We're almost finished. We've barely been at this seven minutes, and we're almost finished. So when I get ready to stamp, especially if it's something that I've pre-planned, I often will set my stamps out on the acrylic blocks and on top of my stamp pads so that I know what I'm going to be doing, especially if I step away. These are acrylic blocks, and uh, this is what we mount our stamps on. This would be a red rubber stamp, and red rubber stamps have their own cushioning. So you can see that there's a, a cushion of foam between the stamp and the block, and they are cling stamps, and so they, they adhere to the acrylic blocks. Um, now on this one, this one has wording on it, and so here's a little trick that I used, because I had so much trouble getting my sentiment to be as straight as I wanted it. I took a very fine, a very narrow piece of washi tape, taped it down on the block back here, and then I found the word makes, because the sentiment says to a friend that makes me smile. So I found the word makes, and I said, let's line up on that word. And so I generally lined up the sentiment on um, makes. Now, I, actually, to be honest with you, I didn't do it on the sticker, because the sticker is adhered later. So actually, what I did is when I put the washi tape on the block, I laid the sticker from the back side looking at this and I looked at the word makes backwards and lined it up that way. I just did it again, did a visual, did an eyeball, but this is going to let me line up my sentiment on my piece over here a little bit more easily. So here we're going to go. So this is shaded spruce. This is one of the colors in our Regal collection. Stampin' Up! has four color families and then we have two groups of colors that we rotate out. Um, we have 
the end colors and they are here for two years. Now, when I say this is gonna help me line this up, I like working on our grid paper and you don't have to have the grid paper. You can use, um, you can have anything where you draw a straight line on it, but I like the grid paper. I I'd normally will use washi tape to attach it to my desktop just to keep it from curling up. But then I line up my piece of paper, my cardstock right here on one of these lines so that I know it's square. And then I take this, stamp it, I go tap, tap, tap. And then I use the washi tape, and pardon my head if it gets in the way. I hope it doesn't. But I try to use the washi tape to help line that up. I match up on the grid paper and do that. So there you go. That's a pretty straight sentiment. Sorry, it took me a little bit to do that. I ended up having to stand up and look over at it. I didn't want to get my head completely in the camera shot. Now, this is pretty as it is, but it's kind of flat. So let's do something else to it to give it a little bit of dimension. Hi there. Who's here? I see one person. I see one person. Oh, Sissy, good morning. How are you? Glad you guys are back. I'm glad you introduced mom to dots. Oh my gosh. I told her it was going to be life changing. So Sissy is a friend of my mom's and they have been on a trip and they brought my mom some new pretzels called dots. And I told my mom they were going to be life changing and she didn't believe me. And after she had a few, she said, okay, I get it. I nearly killed myself on those pretzels this summer sitting by the pool and eating pretzels. I could I could have eaten my a bag of those. So this piece that I'm using right here is the background stamp, a background stamp, and it provides just a little bit of texture. This is from the Forever Fern, so here's the sentiment that we're using, then here's this background. I'm coming back in with soft sea foam, which is a very light green, and all I'm doing is stamping over where I have stamped the sentiment. And you know, this it doesn't have to be this particular stamp, but any stamp like this that has a little bit of texture to it is great for adding dimension and just a little bit of more, little bit more um, interest to your card. So let's close that up. You know, those of you that know me know that uh, if there is an open ink pad, my elbow, my elbow or my hand will find it. So now we're going to put this on the paper on the the card here. But before we do that, we're going to take a piece of this. Uh, Forever Greenery Vanilla Gold, I don't know call it twine or ribbon, and I'm going to tie it in a little bow here. Now, sometimes this works better than others, so I'm going to tie it, and what I normally like to do is tie this into a knot so that I'm not having to try to hold on to everything, and then, of course, it always helps if I have a third hand, which I don't know about you all, I don't have a third hand most of the time. And then, let's see here. Well, that's not what I wanted it to do, but you know what, we're gonna make it work. And so here's an example of when something doesn't work exactly like you want it to. So I have it as a knot and that's great. So let's take the short end, we'll make this loop and we'll make the bow. And I'm gonna show you a little trick because, you know, it's not always about stamping perfectly. It's about stamping and having fun and knowing that, first of all, nobody's going to judge you on what you've done. But here's the bow. And so what I'm going to do is a little cheat trick. I have a piece of scotch tape on the back, and I'm just going to take that off my table. And I'm going to put a piece of tape here and tighten that ribbon up over here. And then lay it down and nobody's the wiser because this is all going to be behind adhesive. So then we'll trim the ends like that. Put this in your recycling bucket. I know it's a ribbon, it's not paper, but it goes, it, it recycles just like everything else. So now we'll take our dimensionals and put these on and I'm going to put them four to a card, four to this piece. You know, it depends on what you're trying to elevate. The dimensionals are great. They're foam that are about an eighth of an inch tall. And they they add so much to cards when you're working with them. 
So there is, we'll put that, that does not look straight to me. I tell you what, I think that's crooked. That's what happens when you eyeball things. So let's try that one more time. We're gonna line that up one more time. Now sometimes it does help to hold it up and, uh, you know, I do have a T-square and I do use it occasionally, but obviously I didn't use it this morning. So, all right, that looks better to me. You know, that's one of the things about these sort of freeform stripes is they will trick you into any number of things. So we'll put this on here. So this piece of white is cut at one and five eighths by two and three eighths. So here are the card dimensions again. So your card base is half of an eight and a half by 11. So it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Your designer series paper is cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Shaded spruce is cut at four by three and a quarter. Your white is one and five eighths by two and three eighths. And there you have it, a very quick and simple card that says to a friend that makes me smile, open it up and you can put any number of things. You could put happy birthday, miss you, hello. You, you could use this for any number of things. And that's one of the beauties about Stampin' Up! is that generally our sentiments, you can use them interchangeably with other cards. And so it makes it fun. It makes it fun to, to work on these and it makes it fun to send cards. Now, let me ask you a favor though. There are a couple of things I'm gonna ask you to do today. First of all, if you're here, please comment. Well, hey Susie, please comment that you're here. I'm gonna do a drawing at the end of the day and I'm gonna gather the comments from the entire day. Uh, and every time um, you can comment on each video to increase your chances to win. And because it's World Card Making Day, the door, the prizes that I'm giving away are gonna be groups of handmade cards, handcrafted custom cards. And uh, here's the thing though, it's World Card Making Day. So we're gonna make cards all day. And at the end of the day, we're gonna have a lot of cards. So what do we need to do next? We need to send cards. So if you're gonna participate in World Card Making Day, either by making cards or sending cards, let tag yourself. Take a picture of the card you're sending. Take a picture of yourself putting stuff in the mail and tag me and make a card, send a card. These are both hashtags, make a card, send a card. And that way, not only will you participate in the World Card Making Day today, this is a gift that we'll continue to keep giving because it's great to make cards and have them, but it's even better to share them with our friends. So it's 9.47 and uh, we, are re we are rocking and rolling. Make sure at the top of the hour, you go back over to Spread Joy Stamping to see Elizabeth's next installation. If you see something you like and you want to order it from your favorite consultant, if you don't have a demonstrator, please use this October host code 67TB7YR9, which I don't know where they come up with these host codes, but they are crazy. Um, but make sure that when you make a card, you send a card. Okay, thanks guys. I'll be back here at Dream and Color SU at not, excuse me, at 1030. We'll be looking at plaid tidings. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody here and I'll catch you guys over at Spread Joy Stampin' just as soon as I get finished. All right, take care. Bye-bye.